Hey guys, Dino here. I'm going to be making another batch of turbo cider. I'm just keeping it real basic. I was going to use some pectolase, but um, couldn't get any from the local homebrew shop that sold out. So I'm just going to do it as I have been doing, and it seems to be working well. So sticking with uh, just the three ingredients, uh, I've got my juice here. Um, this is 2.8 litres and that's going to be enough to fill four 750ml bottles um, including the sugar. Um, so this consists of apple, pineapple, orange, mango puree and passion fruit but it's got no preservatives, no added sugar and no added water so I think that's the main thing you have to worry about just uh, keeping it 100% juice um, then I'm going to be using normal table sugar, uh, so I'm going to add 40 grams per 750ml bottle. And then finally the yeast, I'm, I've still got some USO5 and that's been working well um, with the cider. So yeah, so that's the uh, ingredients. As far as equipment, I've got my four 750ml bottles with the four caps. I have got a large saucepan with a sieve and this is a grain bag that I've uh, doubled over so there's four layers there. Um, that's so I can sieve the juice through here and remove any um, pulp or fibre. And then just a funnel and scales. Okay so I'm just passing the juice through the uh, grain bag and, and it's just sitting inside a normal colander or sieve. Um, this could take quite a while because uh, it started off going through fairly quick but as the pulp matter is um, held back it's sort of blocking up the grain bag but all the juice will eventually go through, it'll probably take about 10 minutes. Um, so I'll come back once that's done and we'll go to the next step. Cheers. Okay, So the juice has passed through the grain bag and what's left behind is all the fibrous pulpy material that you don't want so what I'll do now is I'll just return the juice um, back into the bottle. Okay so I've finished adding the sugar, 40 grams of sugar and the juice to each bottle so I've just um, screwed the caps on fairly tight and just given each bottle a nice shake just to mix up the sugar and juice. Um, and the final step, which we'll do now, is just to put in the yeast. Okay, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use the USO5 ale yeast, but you can use other yeasts like the Nottingham or Champagne yeast or a wine yeast. So each bottle I'm going to be putting in a level uh, one eighth of a teaspoon, which works out to be about a quarter gram. Put that into each bottle. So yep, so just one of those. So I'll come back once I've finished that. So that's it all done. So um, I've added the eighth of a gram. Uh, sorry, the yeah, eighth of a teaspoon or quarter gram to each uh, bottle of the yeast. And I've screwed the caps on nice and tight, and I will. I've given them a nice shake. So that's it, basically. So what I'll do now is I'll ferment those at around 20 degrees for 12 to 14 days and then they'll be ready to drink. Um, this is a different juice, this is a pear and apple juice. Uh, but this was f fermented for uh, between the 12 and 14 days. I think it works out at about 7 or 8% ABV. So yeah, we'll crack this uh, pear and apple juice open. Sort of plenty of hiss in it. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, that's what it looks like. You can smell the alcohol coming off the top. Wow, that tastes good. This has been going down very well with uh, friends and family. Um, they seem to like the, the taste, so that's why I haven't really bothered um, altering the recipe too much. I know it's not clear, um, 
I might try and do that with the following one, the pectolase, but um, no, I'm very happy with that. Plenty of uh, carbonation in there. Beautiful flavour. Um, tastes great. What more could you ask for? Okay, guys, thanks for watching that. We'll uh, catch you next time. I'll probably do a, a taste test of the tropical juice um, cider. Um, when it's ready in a couple of weeks time.